hello everyone so in previous video we have seen the data manipulation and data transfer instruction so the data transfer instruction used to transfer the data and the data manipulation instruction is used to in the operand values right or perform some arithmetic logical operation on that right so now next is program control instruction so program control instruction actually alter the flow of execution right in the previous uh, lectures the instruction that we have seen it not alter the program flow but this program control instruction it will alter your program flow right so it will move you from the next instruction to some another instruction based on some condition right so a program control type instruction when executed may change the address value in the program counter and cause the flow of control to be altered right mm, so the program counter value right instead of incrementing the program counter value now the value in the program counter will be loaded and that will be some another value or some another flow now these are the some of the uh, program control instructions right branch jump skip call return compare and test so compare and test right you cannot say completely it's a branch instruction but this is used with the branch instruction right so <clears throat> for compare what it does it subtracts two operands and based on that it will set some of the flag bits okay and the test will perform the and operation between two operands right and then you can use this uh, complete branch instruction or complete the uh, program control instruction right you can use the branch jump skip call right this so branch and jump mostly they are similar but the difference is the addressing mode that is used in this branch and jump <clears throat> so the branch and jump instruction i use interchangeably to mean the same thing but sometimes they are used to denote different addressing modes so in branch there is only one address so branch and jump instruction may be conditional if it is positive or if zero or unconditional conditional branch means based on some conditional it will alter your flow right unconditional means it will not check any value just the instruction is encountered and it will move to the instruction right and skip is a zero address instruction it skips the next instruction if the condition is met right so it just skip the next instruction and compare instruction performs subtraction between two operands but the result is not retained right it will subtract but it will not store the result it does set the flag bits and the test instruction performs the logical end of two operands without retaining the result or changing the operand similar it also don't change the operand and don't store the result as well but it will just change some of the flag bits right in compare what you do you perform the <coughs> subtraction between two operand in test what we are doing we are performing and between two operand so how it compare and test contains status bits are test uh, set <clears throat> now let's see the status bits or conditional code or you can say a flag bits right so this is the block diagram of it this is your alu right 8 bit alu taking two operands the size of operands are 8 bits right and there are four status bit that we are using here that is carry bit c your sign bit as a zero indication z and overflow right so v that is overflow zero flag sign flag and carry flag now how it sets right so the carry flag so whatever you have at c8 that will be in your carry right so the 8 bit that will be from 0 to 7 
zero to seven, right? After that, the eight bit. If you add it and the more significant, right? Out of that, if you generate the carry, that will be stored here in C, right? Whatever value you have, one or zero, right? Overflow. That is exclusive or between last two carries. That is C seven and C eight. So if you are using this eight bit zero to seven and another operand zero to seven then the carry here and the carry here this is c8 and this is c7 the exclusive or between these two that will be stored in overflow right the zero flag when the result of alu when the result of alu is zero when result is zero the z flag will be set the z flag will be set right sign so the most significant bit of the result that will be used at a sign bit right the same thing that we have uh, we have discussed that is listed here so carry so one if and carry c8 is one zero if the carry is zero the bit s sign bit one if the highest order bit that is f7 the most significant bit right is one Zero if the highest order bit is zero. Then zero. So one if the output of value is zero. Remember this: if output is zero after performing operation, then your Z flag will be one. If output is not zero, then Z flag is zero. <coughs> now overflow. So it is one if the exclusive or of the last two carry is one right exclusive of last two carry is one so when will be the exclusive or will be one if the two carries is different right at that time the result will be one and at that time the overflow set, overflow will be set one in other case right means both are same then overflow is zero right and this condition is true when your numbers are in true complement form right we are taking sign numbers and the representation is in true complement form right so this is the diagram that we have seen mm. now let's mm. see next if your v is set after the after the addition of two sign numbers, means overflow is overflow is said after the addition of two sign numbers, it indicates an overflow condition. Right? If Z is said after an exclusive or operation, it indicates what A equal to B. Right? A single bit, single bit, exclusive or operation between what? between two operands a and b so if you remember x exclusive or x that is zero all right so that so the result is zero and in that case z flag will be set so in this case that we can say a is equal to b right a single bit in a can be checked to determine if it is zero or one by masking all bits Except the bit in question, right? and then checking the Z status bit, right? So let's take an example. So this is my A, right? And I have written like this. This bit I want to identify. It is one or zero, right? And I am performing and. I don't know about this bit, and I want to know that what is the this bit X. So what I am doing, except this x all i am asking as zero right and that i am asking as one right so if i perform the and operation and operation when you perform x and zero the result is zero so all will be zero and when you perform and with one right a and one the result is a right so x and one the result is x right so now what happened if x is 0 if x is 0 so your result will be 0 so in that case this 
z bit will be set z will be 1 so after performing this and operation you will check z if z is 1 z is 1 means this x is 0 if z is 0 means result is not 0 means this is 1 right this is 1 so this way you can check <coughs> now let's see the conditional branch instruction so these are the conditional branch instruction right so <coughs> this is branch if 0 branch if not 0 branch if carry branch if not carry branch if plus branch if minus branch if overflow and branch if no overflow right and what it checks it checks the z flag in this it checks the carry flag in this it checks the sign in this and it checks overflow in this right now see the unsigned number and sign number right b for branch right so in unsigned number what it said branch if higher this is branch if higher or equal means a is higher right higher or equal branch if lower means a is lower than b a is less lower or equal b a equal to b or branch if not equal same way right and this is after this subtraction operation <clears throat> right and sign right for sign compare condition again we will perform the subtraction only right because when you represent your number in two's complement and whether it is a sign or unsigned number right the subtraction will result and it will give you the proper answer on them. you can consider into sign you can consider into unsigned we'll see the example of it in sign the some name is different so branch if greater than branch if greater or equal so instead of high we are using greater for sign right <clears throat> now let's see the example of it so there are two numbers a and it's a 8 bit 11110000 right b is like this and will perform a minus b right so what we'll do per to perform a minus b we do like this a plus two's complement of b right we'll do like this so a plus two's complement of b so take a two's complement of b this number are represented this number are represented in two's complement form right so two's complement of b so now when you add it the result is this result is this 0 0 1 1 1 1 plus 1 0 carry is 1 1 1 1 1 carry is 1 1 1 1 1 and carry is 1 so this is your c8 right now what happened so let's see the status bit after this subtraction so your overflow overflow that is zero because this two sign is same so exclusive or between this that is zero so overflow is zero the zero flag the result is not zero that's why the zero flag is zero if the result is zero then and then this zero flag will be born carry flag yes there is a this value will be the carry so c8 it's one so this is one sign so in result in result you will check you need to check this f7 this one it is one so this will be one right now let's see for unsigned number and signed number we are considering as an unsigned number also we are considering it so as a signed number and i will show you that it will not make a difference in result right first unsigned number if this is the unsigned number means no sign associated with this so a is 240 and b is 20 right unsigned number no sign so if you perform 240 minus 20 the result is 220 and if you see this this is a 220 this is 220 right 
Now, if this is an unsigned number, what you need to check? You need to check C and Z flag. You need to check C and Z flag. If C is equal to 1, means it indicates A greater than B. If C is 0, A less than B. And Z equal to 0 means A is not equal to B. If Z is equal to 1, then you can say A greater than equal to B. That is true. Right? But A is not equal to B as Z is equal to 0. So A greater than B. So in this case, A is greater than B. So when is it's an unsigned number, what you need to check? You need to check C flag and Z flag. And after this, which are the branch is possible? Branch higher, branch higher or equal, branch not equal. Right? Unsigned number from the unsigned number. In the previous table, we have seen for unsigned number and signed number. So for unsigned number, these are the possibility, right? Because A greater than B. A less than B, C is equal to zero. Then branch lower, branch lower equal, branch not equal. That is possible. Right? Now for sign number, same choose complement representation I am using. And for sign number, if you see this A, this is minus 16 because this is the negative number that you can say, right? Now you will discard this extension carry. And this first one, we will indicate as a minus. So this is minus 16. Minus 16, right? Plus, there is no 1. So, plus 0. So, it's a minus 16. So, A is minus 16. B, it's a positive number, we can say, right? Starting with 0. So, this is a positive number. And if you see this, then this is plus 20, right? 16 plus 4. That is plus 20. And if you perform the subtraction, minus 16 minus plus 20 the result is minus 36 result is minus 36 let's check is it possible with this the same uh, a minus b that we have done for unsigned still that answer is valid for sign let's see so the same operation is we are performing choose complement and add it this is the result now as this is a sign number so we'll consider as a sign number so discard this and carry the first one that is minus so what is this so 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 right so this is minus 64 plus this is 32 this is 16 plus 8 plus 4 right if you do this the answer is minus 36 Right, so when we have considered this as a sign, we are getting the answer minus 36. When we are considering as an unsigned, at that time also we are uh, getting the answer that is 2 to 0. Right, so we can say that the subtraction is same for these two representations, unsigned and sign number, it will give you the proper answer only. Right. <coughs> So this thing, what we have seen in this lecture, we have seen the program control instruction which changes the flow of your execution, right? So, and for that program control instruction, you require some of the instruction that is compare and test which sets the status bits or flag bits. And based on that, the branch, you can say jump instruction will change the Flow of execution means it will change the value in your program control, right? So, uh, <clears throat> this thing we are going to cover. Okay, thank you very much.